Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our service this evening, to God's house. This is indeed the house of God, and we are very honored and blessed to be able to share God's word with you all this evening. Um, we, we just hope that the word that Thomas will share with you this evening will really inspire you and bless you. So God bless you. Good evening. We welcome you and we want to invite you to worship Jesus with us today. We know that he is good. He is amazing. He has done all things for us. He has died and he raised up from death. Just for that every one of us could have access to him. So today we want to worship him and I want to invite you to worship Jesus with us. To lift his name high. To bring praises to your place, wherever you are, here at the church or at home, at the car. We just want to bring his presence to worship him. And in the Bible says that he walks in the middle of the worship. So, Jesus, we thank you for your presence. We thank you because you are good. We thank you because you have done so many things for each one of us. So today we want to lift your name high, to give you honor, to give you praise. To give you all that we have because you are worthy of it all, Jesus. So today we are here for you to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's worship our God with happy, with joy, and let's worship Jesus together.
forever we want to lift your name high Jesus because you are good so we thank you for your presence in this place today we honor your presence in here today Jesus we honor you Jesus
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening. Good evening. Holy Assembly. My wife Helena and I believe in proclaiming together in faith the word of God, what we are ministering at the beginning of a meeting. So we are going to proclaim Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. So here we go. For just as rain and snow fall from, from heaven, heaven and do, do not, not return, return without watering the earth, making it bud and sprout, and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that proceeds from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please, and it will prosper where I send it. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, in Jesus' precious and beautiful and glorious name, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for every heart that are listening to these words from your word today, Father God. And I know that they are listening because you have ordained them to listen. And I thank you for this. I thank you for the touch of heaven that only you can provide. I thank you for this spark of hope that you plant into anyone that are listening to these words from your word today, Father God. I thank you for the ability to hear your voice through your spirit. Help us today to hear your voice. Jesus, we need you. We are here because of you. We love you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We worship you. We celebrate your holy name. We praise you. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we cannot do this without you. Move and work. Help me in this situation to to come up with this message today according to your perfect will. May every heart be open to receive it. Embrace every heart. <coughs> Holy Spirit, move and work. Move and work. I ask you to really hit the mark today. That May the word really hit those dark places or those dry places or anything that needs to be revealed. Let it come to light today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today, I have a message on my heart. Kingdom of priests. Kingdom of priests. We are adopted children through the redemption on that cross on Golgotha and through the blood of Jesus. So when we repent and believe in Jesus and what he has accomplished on that cross, we actually have the legal right and with the promise of what awaits in heaven and it surpasses everything. In Exodus 19, 6 it says, and, sh and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, it says. We will dive into the scripture that reveals what God has for us when we are in Christ. Because when we believe in Jesus and what he has accomplished, it is so important it's it's really key to knowing what our identity as followers of christ and the goal is to reach the finish line and describe perfectly in philippians 3 14 it says that i keep running hard toward the finish line to get the prize that is mine because God has called me through Christ Jesus to live up there in heaven. To live up there in heaven. 
So let's today see what the Lord's intention with us really is up, up there in heaven, right? And we do not just want theory, we want something that works in daily living. And I believe when God's people stand up in, in, in word without hesitation, but in action, we will experience what I believe the prophetic promises are a revival of people to the kingdom of God in such a time as this the scripture says I believe and so I spoke so when we believe we speak it we speak it out because because the world really knows what it has now and it doesn't work it doesn't work and I know that many people they see it they see that it doesn't work what they have now but the thing is they they don't see any alternatives but thank God the solution is in the Bible if we go to Hebrews 12 22 24 it says but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to a countless company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. The first line, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. What does it mean? It means spiritually, we are located in Mount Zion when we are born again. Spiritually, we are located in Mount Zion. What is Mount Zion? Mount Zion is the city of God. And it is a place that God loves, the scripture says. Zion is Jerusalem. And Mount Zion, it is the high hill on which David built a citadel. So this describes where we are spiritually when we are in Christ. Physically, we are placed in this world for a time to praise the Lord. But God has made us alive together with Him in the Spirit when we are born again. Okay? He has raised us up and enthroned us. So spiritually, we are placed on Mount Zion. In the body, in this world, we praise the Lord for a time. The whole principle is that when you and I, when, when we are identified with Jesus in the death, and when, when you and I, when we are uh, uh, identified with Him by burial, when we uh, through baptism and resurrected with him then we have a legal right to follow him in every following stage we have a legal right to follow him following him in every following stage it means that you you, you died with Christ you resurrected with him it means actually that you are enthroned you are already enthroned spiritually it goes actually back to the same principle if we go back a little bit in the Old Testament scripture if you go back uh, in the tabernacle our destination is behind the second veil which is 
ascension to be kings and priests on the throne which is a completely new identity but we have to understand this we have to we have to we have to grab it let's look at three groups of created beings here from hebrew 12 i just read at the end of verse 22 is it says a countless company of angels or countless uh, countless number of angels there were so many to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven this is the celebration of all of God's people who are destined to rule with him so you are destined to rule with him did, did you know that you are destined to rule with him right now maybe you do not feel that but that that is his plan because what's gonna happen is that you will sit at his table and eat and drink and sit on thrones in his kingdom but we will get to that there is the angels and then there is the church of the firstborn whose names are recorded in heaven that is those who are born again through faith in Jesus Christ and then there's spirit of just man made perfect it says which I understand to be the Old Testament saints uh, who were made perfect by a lifetime walk of faith so those are the three groups of created beings in Mount Zion the heavenly Jerusalem in the very presence of God himself so we are talking about a very glorious and powerful and majestic assembly it's 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 maybe hard to imagine but let's really try it's angels millions of angels church of the firstborns and then just men made perfect countless numbers of angels it says it's so majestic it's beautiful <clears throat> I mean th this this is the Word of God this is the Word of God and this is the truth if 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 we really understood this I think there would be no no depression among God's people everybody would repent to Christ if we, we could really grab this if we really got this but today we go through this that we are not only identified with the resurrected life and ministry and serving of Jesus here on earth which often takes all the focus and this is of it's of course it's great of course it is but there is much more there's something much greater and it is his ascension and his life ministry in heaven we are heirs we are adopted children through the redemption on that cross and through the blood of Jesus so when we repent and believe in Jesus and believe in what he has accomplished we have the legal right and with the promise of what awaits in heaven and that is greater than you can imagine but the Bible describes it because when Jesus ascended to heaven and took his place on the throne with the Father he entered into his two supreme 
unique and final ministries. And that also applies to you and me. He became king and he became priest. And in this also, you and I are invited to identify ourselves with Jesus. It is your identity in Christ when you're born again. Are you really, really aware of this? We are adopted to be kings and priests in heaven. Let's read some verses in the book of Revelation, which expresses this truth. Revelation 1 verses 5 and 6, it says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the king of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests, to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So by the very act, by this very act, that when Jesus redeemed us from our sins by his own blood, by that very act, he has made us to be kings and priests to God and to him be glory and power forever and ever. And the same again in Revelation 5. 9 to 10 it says that and they sang a new song you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals these words are addressed to jesus of course because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for god from every tribe and language and people and nation you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our god and then in 1 Peter 2, 9, Peter says it very clearly. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So what are the specific responsibilities of kings and of priests? What does it really mean? The king's job is to rule and to reign. But many do not quite understand what the priest's role is, but it's made clear in scripture. The priest's responsibility, it is to make sacrifices. It is to make sacrifices. Only priests could make sacrifices in God's, in a to God in God's order. So you can say that king, kings, they rule, and priests, they make sacrifices. It's the same today. But what do I exactly mean by this? Okay, <clears throat> I can quote 1 Peter 2, 5. It says that you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ the thing is that as priests we must have sacrifices to offer to God <laughs> what is he saying yeah <laughs> because that is the special ministry confined to priests to be able to offer sacrifices to God Peter says offering spiritual sacrifices offering spiritual sacrifices what he means is that they are not like the sacrifices of the mosaic law in the Old Testament it, it is not for example animals no but we offer spiritual 
sacrifices, right? Meaning, we follow the example of Jesus Christ, who in heaven offers to God the spiritual sacrifice of His intercession and prayer on our behalf. For it's written in Hebrew 7.25, Therefore He, meaning Jesus, is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. Okay, so when Jesus he says in John 4, 14, 6, I, most people know this, that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Then Jesus, he intercedes for those who come to God through him since he always lives. Jesus' ministry on earth only lasted three and a half years. But his ministry as a king and a priest has already lasted almost 2,000 years. And it will last forever. And you and I, we are invited, yes, not only to share with Jesus, his, uh, his uh, earthly ministry. And this is what we do now when we proclaim the cross, the blood of Jesus, all these things. But through our identification with Him to enter the eternal heavenly ministry as kings and priests. There is so much focus on everything that is about here and now. And it's of course extremely important. Don't take me wrong. But the goal is far greater. And when we really know that we are in Jesus Christ, it is a taste here and now of what is to come. It is far greater than we can imagine. But the scripture explained it to us. And it is to enter to the eternal heavenly ministry as kings and priests. But spiritually, our identification with Jesus makes us already citizens of the heavenly side. Zion, as I talked about in the beginning, the city of the living God. In the spirit, it has already happened. It has already happened. Even your body is at home. So you think, for example, in your living room now, in your kitchen, in your office, then it is something that has already taking place through our identification with Jesus Christ in the Spirit. When we really catch this, we look at everything in a new way. We look at things differently. So our spiritual location is the heavenly Zion. We are already there in that glorious assembly with the angels and all the firstborn in the heavenly Zion. And out of the heavenly Zion, through our identification with Jesus, we rule on God's behalf through prayers. We are a kingdom of priests. And we rule through prayer. And this is stated also in Psalm 110 verses 1 and 2. It says, The Lord says to my Lord, Sit at, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. 
the Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. So we see that Jesus is already ruling, although the enemies are still there. And the scepter of his authority ex is extended out of Zion. That's a spiritual scepter. It's a spiritual scepter. And as we take our place in Zion through our identification with Jesus on the throne, then through our prayers in the power of the Holy Spirit, we extend that scepter of his kingdom over the earth. We become identified with Jesus in his authority over the nations. So through our prayers, we exercise this authority. <clears throat> In a world filled with um, titles and roles, and it's important to be something and things of that nature, you know. Then we, 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 we come to Christ in, in our weakness, in our hopelessness, sometimes in our sorrow, and sometimes uh, we, we know that we have come to an end of ourselves. And uh, what, what does God do? <laughs> he makes us kings and priests he turns everything around he turns everything around our <clears throat> identity as a kingdom of priests it also it sets us apart from this world the, the kingdom of God it is not an external realm but rather it's an uh, inner kingdom it's it's a kingdom where Jesus Christ himself rules and reigns in our hearts and he has adopted us to reign with him <clears throat> I was thinking of Romans 14, 17. It says that the kingdom of God, it is not food and drink, but it is righteousness. It is peace. It is joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is not food and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Our Savior's presence, it fills us with the righteousness that only comes from Him. It's because of faith. We are made righteous because of faith. It is completely undeserved, but because of His mercy and grace. You can say that at its very core the, the kingdom of God is rooted in righteousness not our own righteousness our own righteousness absolutely not but righteousness imputed to us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ it is the very bedrock you know the bedrock that goes deep that goes very very deep on which the whole kingdom of God stands. Out of his righteousness flows of rivers of peace and joys. It just flows. Isaiah 32, 17 says, The work of righteousness will be peace, but the effect of it, it is quietness. And it is assurance forever. So the, 
the effect of righteousness it is quietness and assurance forever so when you have been made righteous by faith in what Jesus he has already accomplished you have an assurance I think it's the world's best assurance don't you think Revelation 1 5, 5 one more time it says to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood our Savior's love has not only released us from the chains of sin from the yoke of sin no but it has made us royalty and priests in his kingdom it is far greater it is far greater yes we do we do not just receive his mercy we are crowned as kings and priests heirs to his eternal kingdom which is a combination of of uh, kingship and priesthood which go it, it goes beyond human understanding we have to be revealed by this by the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament there was a king Melchizedek his name means kings of righteousness he was a king of Jerusalem and priest of the Most High God. Hebrews 6.20 says that Jesus has become a high priest forever in the order of exactly him, Melchizedek. So Jesus is both our king and our high priest forever interceding for us before the Father. Before I finish, I just want to mention <clears throat> this. In a world um, that is overshadowed by darkness, and I, as I see it, it's getting worse and worse. And we are chosen to stand between God and humanity. When you are in Christ, you are chosen to stand between God and humanity, proclaiming the power of the cross of the blood of Jesus Christ and with that our lives become living sacrifices we have made the living sacrifices through the Holy Spirit because Jesus intercedes as Peter he said one more time offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ this is the essence that's an offering it is as we mirror Christ's love his love his grace his mercy to a world in desperate need but how then do we practically practically uh, embrace the kingdom of light if you want in, in our lives it is by getting closer to the heart of Christ for every day cultivating righteousness within ourselves through the Holy Spirit and spending time with the Lord spending time with the Bible and cultivating our relationship with our Savior every single day have the goal in sight where you sit at the table with Jesus and rule with him as kings and priests as this is the promise for you and I when we are in Christ Jesus this is 
his promise and then I will finish Luke 22 verses 28 to 30 it says you are those who have stood by me in my trials and I confer on you a kingdom just as my father conferred on one on me so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. Let the king of my heart be to my 
fountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my soul. Let the king of my heart be the shepherd. Jesus, you are indeed good. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we are adopted children through the redemption on that cross and through the blood of Jesus. So when we repent and believe in Jesus Christ and believe in the blood of Jesus and everything that he has accomplished, we have, as I said before, we have the legal, divine right, and with the promise of that awaits in heaven. The scripture says that if we endure, we shall also reign with him, and if we deny him, he 
also will deny us. And you and I, we are invited not only to share uh, uh, with Jesus his earthly ministry when we are in him, but through our identification with him to enter the eternal heavenly ministry as kings and priests. Jesus says that he confer on you a kingdom just as the Father comfort one on him, so that you may eat and drink at his table in his kingdom and sit on thrones. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have the Holy Spirit touched your heart today? Do you know that you need Jesus? Would you like to eat and to drink at his table in his kingdom and sit on thrones with him forever? Are you willing also to accept that you are a sinner, that you need Jesus? Will you accept that Jesus takes all of your sins upon himself in your place so that you can be reconciled with him? Will you love him back and accept his open invitation to a life together with him forever? Will you allow him to reveal the truth of all things to you and give you eternal life would you like that God wants to give you life he wants to give you abundant life it's written in John 10 10 when Jesus said the enemy only comes to kill steal and destroy but I have to give you life and life more abundant have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior in your life? Is it something that you would like to do today? If so, please say after me. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive my sins. Today, I will turn from my sins and by faith, I will gratefully receive your gift of salvation and be born again. I believe that you are the Son of God who came to earth in the flesh who died on the cross for my sins and was raised by God from the dead on the third day. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and Savior. That your words are true. And I invite you into my heart and my life. I believe that you took my sin, guilt and shame on that cross. You redeemed me from going to hell and have given me a place in heaven. A life of purpose on earth and the relationship with your father amen if that's you and you said this prayer and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior we would like to welcome you to God's family and celebrate it together with you and if you are here in the Algarve 
we would of course like to meet up with you in person. But if it is you, no matter what, if it's you online, and you just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please text, I have decided to this Portuguese number. It is plus 351 for Portugal, 962-19-5555. And we will be in contact with you, with you shortly. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you. Bye. Are you around me? With a melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy. All my fears are gone, cause I'm no longer slave. child of God and I'm no longer slave to fear I am a child of God this womb you have chosen me you love has called my name I've been born again into my family your blood flows through my veins cause I'm no longer
Father, blessed week. We wish you a great week ahead.